Well, hello, girls and boys and moms and dads, and welcome to PJs and Pillows. Tonight we've got a great book. It's one of my favorites. It's called A Sick Day for Amos McGee. It was written by Philip Stead and illustrated by Aaron Stead, and it won the Caldecott Medal as the best book for children in 2011. Let's read the inside cover together. Amos McGee, a friendly zookeeper, always made time to visit his good friends, the elephant, the tortoise, the penguin, the rhinoceros, and the owl. But one day, a chew, he woke up with the sniffles and the sneezes. Though he didn't make it into the zoo that day, he did receive some unexpected guests. Let's find out who those guests were. Let's begin to read. Amos McGee was an early riser. Every morning when the alarm clock clanged, he swung his legs out of bed and swapped his pajamas for a fresh pressed uniform. He would wind his watch and set a pot of water to boil, saying to the sugar bowl, a spoonful for my oatmeal, please, and two for my teacup. Belly full and ready for the workday, he'd amble out the door. Every day, Amos waited for the bus number five. Next stop, City Zoo, the bus driver would call. 6 a.m., right on time, he'd reply. Amos had a lot to do at the zoo, but he always made time to visit his good friends. He would play chess with the elephant, who thought and thought before making a move. He would run races with the tortoise, who never, ever lost. Amos would sit quietly with the penguin, who was very shy. And he would lend a handkerchief to the tortoise, who always had a runny nose. And at sunset, Amos read stories to the owl who was afraid of the dark. One day, Amos awoke with the sniffles and the sneezes and the chills. He swung his achy legs out of bed, curled them back again and said, Ugh, I don't think I'll be going to work today. Meanwhile, at the zoo, the animals waited for their friend. The elephant arranged his pawns and polished his castles. The tortoise stretched his legs and limbered up. The penguin sat quietly all by himself. The rhinoceros worried that his allergies were worsening. The owl perched atop a tall stack of storybooks, scratching his head with concern. Where is Amos? The animals wondered. Later that day, the animals left the zoo. They stood on the bus stop where Amos always stood and waited for the bus. And then they got on the bus. How did that elephant and that rhinoceros fit through the bus door? Finally, they arrived at Amos's house. Amos was still in bed and he said, hooray, my good friends are here. The elephant prepared a game of chess. Amos thought and thought before making a move. I'm too tired to run races today, said Amos to the tortoise. Let's play hide and seek instead. The tortoise hid inside his shell. Amos hid beneath his covers. Amos yawned. I could use a nap. The penguin sat quietly, keeping Amos's feet warm. Achoo! Amos awoke with a sneeze. The rhinoceros was ready with a handkerchief. I'm beginning to feel much better, thank you, said Amos to his friends. He swung his legs out of bed, 
Perhaps we'll share a pot of tea. Amos wound his alarm clock. It's getting late, he said. After all, we have a morning bus to catch. So Amos said good night to the elephant, and good night to the tortoise, and good night to the penguin, and good night to the rhinoceros, and good night to the owl, who, knowing that Amos was afraid of the dark, read a story aloud before turning out the light. And it looks like all the friends slept together in Amos's bedroom. And that's the end of the story. A sick day for Amos McGee. So, brush your teeth, give hugs to the people you love, and have sweet dreams. Good night.